Hello and welcome to the Palletful Packs YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you everything that is in this blue box for October 2021 for Premier Palletful Packs. And my mailman destroyed my box again, so I am doing it in a bit of a different way this time. So the first thing that we have here after that little sticker are these Tombow hand lettering brushes in this beautiful, beautiful blue set. Tombow markers are water-based ink and you can blend them with water and they are dual tipped with with one side being a brush end and the other side being a thinner bullet nib. And as you just saw, this is a really beautiful variety of different blue colors to play with here. Next, we have this Tombow blending kit, which comes with a dual brush blender pen, a spray mister, and a blending palette. So uh, the blending palette comes in this little blending guide. You can see it right here on the back of it. It also has a color chart of the dual brush pen colors, and the blending guide has little tips and tricks and things like that. This is the water-based dual-sided blending marker, which is basically like a one without ink, you know, it's just water in it. And then there is a little spray bottle that you can fill up and use to spray and diffuse the ink that way as well. So kind of all the little tools that you'll need. The next thing that we have in here is a white jelly roll by Secura. These are great gel pens, especially for adding in little white highlights and details. And these are water-based too, so you can actually kind of erase them with water. I'll show you how I do that later. Then we have these two pens by Winsor & Newton. We have them in 0.5 and 0.1. One note about the pen, the 0.5 pen batch that was sent out to us by Winsor & Newton was unfortunately defective. And so we are going to be receiving a gray fine liner next month. Um, and there are more details about that in your email if you are a powerful subscriber. So definitely check your email if you have issues with your pen and have questions about that. But otherwise, these are beautiful fine liners that are water-based with dark blue indigo go ink. Next, we have this beautiful set of Fudenosuke Calligraphy Brush Pens by Tombow. There are two tip varieties. There's a soft tip with a flexible brush and a hard tip with a firm brush. So I've tried both of these before. They are so lovely to work in. Um, they're beautiful, beautiful fine liners, and you can really get a variety of different line widths with them. So I'm really excited to incorporate them with the rest of these supplies. The last thing here is the surface, which is this toned blue mixed media pad with 15 sheets. You can see how beautiful and uh, varied that texture is. And this is everything that you're going to get in this month's box. So let's go ahead and make some art with this. I'm really excited to play around with all of this blue. The first thing that I have to do, as always, is make some swatches so I can see how all of the different colors look on the surface, especially because, like I mentioned, this blue paper has really, got a really pretty texture to it. It's very smooth, but it has this really beautiful um, kind of paper fibered texture in it. So I wanted to try everything out on top of it. I also played around with blending them a little bit. The little white, uh, the little clear bent blender pen was really, really helpful. And then when I sprayed it, I was like, wow, this is so cool. So I started out with a real quick loose sketch with the lightest color. I thought I was recording, but I must have forgotten. So you missed the very first like 15 seconds, but I swear it didn't take long. Um, and then I started flushing everything out really, really loosely with just some of the brush markers um, to get an overall base of color. And then I sprayed the whole thing with water and get it, let it get really blended and loose and let it dry. And you can see I got such a beautiful watercolor effect from that. Um, it created such a beautiful background for me to work on. So I wanted to create something uh, with all the blues. I was just so drawn towards the idea of water and the ocean and things like that. So that is what I went with. I decided to do a oceanscape with some rocks and then I wanted to put a little lighthouse on top of the tallest rock so that I could use the dark black pen for that. And I thought it would be this really pretty serene scene, serene scene. So I really enjoyed working on this. Um, after I had done that wash which I thought oh, I'm still obsessed with how that came out like it it just blended so pretty um I used the markers to start building up more details about where everything was in the piece so I established the overall outline of the rocks with some of the lighter colors and I'm trying to let more of the background come through on that because the background is more of a blue gray um and that way it will add a little bit more of that grayness to the rocks and then the ocean and sky will be more blue around it and I started flashing out the ocean as well using a variety the like the three darkest colors I would say I kind of uh, blended back and forth to create 
some waves. And then I would use the lightest color or the blender pen to blend the waves into one another. I just kind of went over them and um, uh, just got, kind of went over like the ends to blend them more. Um, the more you go over it, the more it will kind of like blur out, but you don't want to go over it too much because even though this paper is super, super, super sturdy, eventually like you will be able to rip through the paper. So I sprayed it with some water over by the rocks so that it could be a little bit more blurry there where the water was going to be splashing up onto the rocks. And then I used the blender pen a little bit more to soften out the waves even more. Once that had dried, I went in with the finer, more bullet nib side of the marker to create more fine details and sharper lines in the rocks. These sharper lines help define the overall shape of the rock and they help to add in these areas where these darker cracks would be um, and this sharper contrast to the soft blurriness of the ocean and the sky especially. Then I'm going back over with the lightest color brush tip to soften out some areas of those lines, build up some shading and adding in a little bit more shading as well with like the medium toned blue. I'm trying to keep it trying to keep it from getting too, too blue. So I'm just trying to build up the shading where it needs it. Then I'm going to use the lightest color and the water blender in a really quick, loose zigzag kind of fashion to create a very, very faint feeling of rain falling in the background. And then I used the Winsor & Newton fine liner to go over and add in some even darker and finer details. And because it's water-based, I was able to go in with the blender pen from Tombow and I was able to soften that out even more. Now to make everything pop and add in the rest of the contrast and really make the ocean come alive, it was time to go in with the white gel pen to add in the sea foam and the water like reflections and everything like that. So I started with the fo sea foam where it's crashing up against the rocks. And the technique that I'm using for this is essentially I will lay down the color in it, like a kind of scrumbly, scrumbly manner, um, very loose, very sketchy. And then I will immediately smear it and dab it with my finger. So like at the end of this, the bottom of my finger was covered in light blue gel pen because <laughs> of constantly doing that, but it really smears it out and smudges it. And you can create really cool different effects. When I'm working on some of the more spray area, a lot of times I'll tap it and um, create a tapping effect and that will make more like dots and blurs and smears. For this, when I'm working on the ocean, I'm smearing left and right so that it blends in the direction that I want it to go. Um, it will really help soften things out. And then you can actually layer up white on top to to build different levels of white. So you can see that like here I have lightened it up, put on the white, smeared it, put on more white, smeared it, and it builds up different opacities. You can also erase any issues that you have with that blender pen. You just saw me do that because they're water-based and the blender pen is water. You can basically just erase it and it's kind of nicer to use the blender pen than a water brush because it doesn't dump out water. It's much more controlled because it is in a marker form. So it's really nice for things like that. Then I went in with the fine tip of the Tombow pen and I started outlining this little uh, lighthouse that was going to be on top of the rocks and trying to make it look like a lighthouse and not like the Tower of Sauron was like kind of hard, but I think, I think it worked out okay. And here's another tip for the white gel pen and the markers. I will put the white gel pen on. You want to make sure that it's super, super dry, let it fully dry. And then you can go over the top with the markers and you can color in on top of that white gel pen. And so I did that to make these little stripes on the lighthouse. And then I used the gel pen and smearing technique again to help with creating the starburst of light from the lighthouse. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how I created this little seascape. And I really hope that you liked it. I hope that it helped you learn some different techniques and unique ways to use these supplies. And if you liked this video and you want to get your own box of palletful supplies every month, then definitely check out the link in the description box below to get one of your own. So thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see what everyone does with this month's box and I will see you later. Have a great day. Bye.